In this video, I'm doing something different. I'm taking this project with this scene and representing or visualizing it in six different styles. Okay, so I'm recreating this video I did way back on the channel, but this time taking it to the next level. It's one scene and the six different styles are realistic with real-time rendering, collage, another realistic, but this time focusing on post-production, then watercolor, markers, and digital sketch. Now I'm using the project Eames House, originally known as Case Study House Number no. 8, designed by Charles and Ray Eames. And this is a really interesting project, and I highly recommend you getting to know more about it if you've never heard about this house. I'll leave some links down in the video description. Now I chose this particular scene to work with, and during this video I'm going to share the process of each style. And this exercise is challenging, I'm not going to lie. I tried to use a range of techniques, and some of which I'm not really comfortable with, to be honest. Now this video is sponsored by Concept D, and I want to explore more the touch screen with pen support to create a sketch style, but I'll talk more about this device during the video. Now this challenge is a great opportunity for you to get outside of your comfort zone and explore your creativity. Working for an architectural firm can sometimes limit the different outcomes an image or a rendering can have, so this exercise is great to widen your view and rewire your brain to notice different aspects of the image. Alright, so I guess you're really curious to see how each style will turn out, so let's take a look at each process. 1. Realistic with real-time rendering Okay, so realistic is the style, but using the real-time rendering in the majority of the process will result in a very specific type of image. It's one technique, but with a very specific workflow. And working with real-time renderings is basically just changing the sliders and the settings on the software, whether that's Lumion, Twinmotion, D5, Enscape, you name it. Here, I'm using Lumion. The challenge about this style, I guess, is taking that game-like look out of it, that artificial look. You need to really put time into changing every setting and customizing it to feel unique. Add lots of imperfections like weathering, round the edges, play with the sliders and all. Now the biggest advantage of this approach is the immense library of assets, in my opinion. I, like I studied the original project and I got a hint that they like vases with plants, <laughs> just a hint. Just kidding, but I went all in and populated this space with little objects and details to give life to it. This is an extra thing that definitely makes the scene richer, but I would say it's not a deal breaker if you don't do it. Now, real-time renderings will demand a powerful graphics card, or also called as GPUs, and the laptop that I'm using is the Concept D7 Easel, and the NVIDIA Studio graphics card can handle this rendering with ease. Now, there are a couple of videos here on the channel that talks more about Lumion and this real-time rendering workflow. I'm gonna also link them down in the video description if you wanna check it out later. Alright, so after some more time adding details and changing settings, then just a bit of Photoshop later, here's the final result. Honestly, I'm quite happy with how this image turned out. Adding the vegetation in 3D had definitely its advantages. It appears on reflections and casts some interesting shadows around the composition. Now, let me know in the comments what you think about each step, but let's get going, and at the end of the video, I'll show you all of the styles side by side. 2. Collage This one was the quickest of them all, and I think this is one of the biggest things about this style. You can achieve so much with so little. You just stitch some textures together, try to create a sense of depth, and play with the color palette, and you will have a pretty interesting composition full of personality. My tip on this type of image is this. Learn how to add multiple textures on top of each other and work with the blend modes so that you can mix a paper texture with a subtle concrete one, for example. And be sure to use a good looking color scheme. I usually try to aim for more pastel and subtle colors and if necessary, use one or two accent colors. But still, I would avoid really saturated ones. Like this red here is very vibrant and all, but if I color pick the multiple shades of red here, you can see that it never really goes to the corner there. So as a last tip here, it can be interesting to break free of the canvas boundary. Not every collage has to be this way, but if you're gonna use this move, it's here that will fit in nicely. Again, really quick and easy, I try to be as pure of a collage as possible, but in a normal use, I would probably mix this style with something else, add some sketches over it, or some different shadow types. I don't know, it's just that the possibilities with collage are really endless, to be honest. 3. Realistic with post-production in Photoshop 
This is the workflow I'm most comfortable with. It's how I've been creating images for the past few years and the skills I have most developed out of them all for sure. But an image with this much vegetation and small details is hard. It's all about finding the right assets to compose this image. And lately I've been relying more on websites like Unsplash for example, rather than just typing in on Google images. There you get a lot more pixels and it's free to use, which is really important. Okay, so with the base render, I did as I always do. All the fall materials from the library were slightly modified to fit my colors and mood. I turned off the default sun and added a HDRI to create a more realistic lighting. Also, I added some fog, like distance fog, to start creating the depth right from the render and not wait until I get to Photoshop to do that. And since I did two of these images before, the Lumion and the Collage ones, I knew more or less which elements composed this image, so I didn't have to figure that out again. It was the foreground elements, the grass with some vegetation, the left trees, and the hue in the background. Well, the red wall too, and a few other things. And a post-production process is really a trial and error type of approach, grabbing digital assets and trying to fit on the scene, swapping to something else, and then finally make them feel in place, like adjusting the colors with the hue and saturation adjustment layer, and the values with the levels, and then adding shadows and all. Now look, I didn't go too far with the faces with plants, because I should have added the faces back on 3D, like just the empty vases, and added only the plants here in Photoshop. But I guess that's alright, it's one big difference between the Lumion one and this image. Now I did a lot of work with 3D rendering, both using the GPU and CPU and lots of Photoshop, so having a cooling system that can handle all of this performance is definitely required. The Concept D7 ESO uses a vortex flow, a cooling system that sucks the heat out of the laptop, but still manages to be pretty quiet, which is impressive. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this result. Personally, I feel that it's a lot more unique than the one done with Lumion. It has its pros and cons for sure. Here, I feel that I'm the one making the decisions and it feels like I'm doing art, like painting and composing. As opposed to the one in Lumion, where it's more about sliding the sliders and fine-tuning the settings. And in a way, it feels that I'm depending too much on the software and I'm not really in control. 4. Watercolor now hear me out, I'm not really good at watercolor, to be honest, I only used it a couple of times in my life, but that was part of the challenge, right? Get outside of my comfort zone. And I think practicing a skill like this can exercise your creative and artistic skills in other ways that the usual modeling, rendering, and post-production work can't. Now I kinda cheated a bit here and copied the base drawing from the screen. Well, I could have done it myself using vanishing points and all, maybe not that precise, but I also needed to match this one with all of the other images so that I could compare one on top of each other, so using the same angle and point of view was really important. The thing I understand the most about watercolors is that if you don't have the skills, like me, <laughs> you should start light, like lots of water and little color, then you can build up the intensity, that's much easier. So I went for gradients and really tried to work with the limited color palette I had. The trick is to mix them, like the green here for the grass had a bit of all of the greens that I had at my disposal, but also some yellow for example. So you gotta be creative in that sense. So I watched a couple of tutorials on YouTube before getting started, but I found it easier to outline the drawing with a black ink pen. Not sure what to call this type of pen in English, uh, but then if you do that this way, you can fill in the spaces and this is much easier than trying to do some next level moves all in watercolor. Now I did practice a bit, uh, did a really fast test just to get going and then I worked on a finished piece which turned out okay but I thought it was too intense and it was giving me some child drawing vibes so I tried again and this is my final piece. Still there's a lot to improve for sure but I kind of liked it. Fifth markers. Now the entry barrier with this technique is lower than watercolor for sure, you can get a fairly good result with a lot less skill. I don't have a full collection of markers, but at the store I bought a handful of colors that I thought created an interesting color palette, and that would fit precisely with my drawing and my needs. Now the thing about markers is that they are not so forgiving as watercolors, so one stroke comes strong and it will stay in, so we need to be more conscious about each move. Now here I also used a combination of black lines and markers, and the areas I aimed were vegetation with the two green shades I got, 
the iconic red wall and a soft cool grey for the shadows and other details. Now this style fits well with early ideas like the initial sketches and all, where you can be more conceptual and not so precise with some things. And this is the result I got. It's alright I guess. Not the best drawing, but the whole aesthetic is interesting for sure. And now last but definitely not least, the digital sketch style. Now being able to sketch directly in Photoshop with the aid of layers and the undo command is something that I've been looking forward to be honest. A touch screen with pen support gives you so much creative possibilities, but for this exercise I narrowed my options and only used in a sketch way, a black and white drawing. The challenge was to create something good with different line thicknesses and lots of details. Being able to utilize the full potential of the easel hinge and tilt the screen down to flat mode made this process much smoother. And then after a couple of minutes in, I kind of forgot that I was drawing on a laptop because the responsiveness is also incredible to be honest. Now overall with this drawing I feel that I didn't get the thickness quite alright, like the tree shadows are too intense comparing to the rest of the drawing. And then after I finished this piece, I added a paper texture on top of it, and here's the final result. It feels like something is missing, like color-wise, but still, that was the go, so we had contrast between all of the images. And for the grand finale, we can compare them side by side, or even do an animation like this. So now leave in the comments below your favorite image out of the six, and this challenge is quite fun to do. I'd love to see your take on this, well it doesn't have to be six styles, maybe just start with three as I did on that video I mentioned. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget that we have courses that teach architectural representation and visualization, links down below in the video description, and if you made it until here, here's a video that I think you're gonna like it. I'll see you in the next video.